We're going to keep it moving to the main topic of the day, and we've got a doozy. Yes, we do. All right. Today, we are going to be talking about a topic that um, I don't think it gets discussed a lot in the Christian uh, community. I don't want to say it's like taboo, but it's something that we don't talk about a lot. And we've got uh, we've got a lot to say about it. It's actually going to be like a three part, I think, series. But we're going to cover a couple of points of it today. We're going to be talking about sex within marriage. Are you ready Are you to ready? make love? Mm. I don't think they're ready, BD. Because it's not just sex when you when you're talking about marriage. All right. There's a lot of there's a lot of layers, a lot of a lot of different factors, different things that we need to talk about so that people can be ready for sex within marriage. Josh, I'm going to let you take it from here. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is my rookie season, you know, had a lot to learn, learning curve. OK, um, but one thing that I realized, BD, that I think a lot of people getting up to the day of marriage, even in marriage that they have lost sight of, that there is a drastic difference between making love mm. and making lust. Okay. See, in the dating <clears throat> experiences, in the engagement between two souls physically before marriage, there's a lot of lust making. Right. Lust is the overbearing desire for something. And when it comes within the sexual context, BD, a lot of people become overly consumed in the intoxication, mm -hmm. the infatuation mm. that leads to sexual experiences that to a degree warps a person's mind, having them create expectations that exceeds the actual engagement within the beautiful umbrella of marriage, causing people to be disappointed. They say, BD... That the mother of all disappointments is false expectations. Mm. That when you've had experiences sexually that was lust based, that was, I just had to get my rocks off. I just like the way he feels. I just want to get this, get that, get that. Or to the point where we need to marry because we're burning with passion. That is married to, it's better to marry than to burn with, with passion. A lot of people, when they open the door of marriage and really engage of and within the parameters that God has set for it, mm -hmm. they're drastically disappointed. Right. Because there's certain components of marriage, BD, that takes work. And even lovemaking takes work, both mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So within the next few weeks, depending on when the Lord leads us, mm -hmm. To deposit wisdom for you all, we're going to be breaking down the expectations, the requirements, and the joys of being prepared mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically for the benefits and the requirements of love making. Now, I don't know if you want to jump in now because I feel myself in a river mm -hmm. that I can exegete this and really e exasperate it. Mm -hmm. To where people can get full understanding. So I don't know if you're ready to jump in now, BD, or you want me to go ahead and go to the first point. Yeah, was just so what what points are we gonna what two are we gonna cover today? We're gonna talk about the spiritual responsibility and the mental preparedness okay. for love making. When it comes to the spiritual component, when it comes to sex, we have to understand the creator of it and our spiritual responsibilities for love making. Like I said previously, man, if you don't know who love is, you won't know how to make love. You won't know how to make love to, to a significant other that's your husband or wife. You won't know how to be loving to the people around you. So it's important for us to understand the spiritual responsibilities of, of, of love making. I got a scripture right here. Let me pull up my Googles. Mm -hmm. Let me pull up my Googles, B. Okay. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a limited time. Sound like a sandwich for a limited time offer. That you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Mm. When it comes to being married, 
as a man and a woman, we should never deprive ourselves of each other. But when you have a lustful expectation of sex going into a marriage, that you're not going to have the right spiritual frame of mind that the only time that you should separate sexually is to is in regards to devotion of prayer or the devotion of 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 seeking God. But he says, but y'all got to come back together again so that you won't be tempted because of lack of self-control and lust. The fruit of lust is the lack of self-control. Mm. Self-control is the foundation by which lovemaking can exist. Selflessness and self-control from a spiritual perspective leads to sex being enjoyable because it's hard to enjoy sex with a lustful mind. Right. It's hard to engage without a spiritual understanding that I cannot deprive my wife of of love making, I cannot deprive her of what's that what she should enjoy. Or at any time, the only time we should separate ourselves from each other is when I want to devote myself for prayer. But the Bible says y'all got to come quickly together, mm -hmm. because if not, there will be a wedge in the marriage. And what causes the biggest wedge within marriages? The false expectation of sex. Mm -hmm. And a lustful heart and lustful mind that contributes to a false expectation. Right. And many people go days and weeks and months without coming together because they're doing something else with something with someone else or with another screen. Mm -hmm. So, BD, I'll go ahead and open that up for you unless you want to contribute. Well, we can get right to the mental aspects of lovemaking. Nah, it's a lot there with the spiritual. Like, that's, that's a really good point. And it's something that you don't always think about, but like... That, yeah, that, that is, that's the spiritual responsibility that you have as their spouse. Um, like, God, I think people, like, forget that God did, like, God designed sex. And he designed it. He designed it for men and women. He designed it to be within the, con, um, the context of marriage. And there's spiritual implications to that. Like, sex is how, you know, we come together together. And we consummate our love for each other. We become one flesh. It's how we reproduce. Like it's it's a major responsibility. It's very important. And <clears throat> you know when you when you come at it from how the world you know portrays sex as just a lustful physical act, like if that's how you're approaching it, then it's going to be completely messed up. But when the Bible talks about you know like you said the scripture, you can't deprive each other. You know, from, you know, from coming together, from consummating, from having, from having sex. That's, that's important, man. Like, because I don't know, like you just, like I said, sometimes we as Christians, we kind of like make it like a taboo or something that we can't talk about. But like, that's an important part of marriage. If you are not coming together on a regular basis from both the male and the female side, you could be causing them to stumble. You can right. open the door for Satan to come in and, you know, for a woman it, feeling insecure, like, does my husband not want me? Am I not attractive anymore? You know, maybe I need to find that somewhere else. Maybe somebody else needs to tell me that I'm fly, Aisha Curry. Uh, the, mm -hmm. From the male perspective, you know, hey, we got needs, you know. So if your wife is not allowing you to come together or whatever, you start finding, trying to find it somewhere else. You start, hey pornography or looking at other talking to other women it just opens the door for satan to come in and divide that marriage so you have a absolutely you have a responsibility a spiritual responsibility to your spouse so that y'all can remain whole and y'all can remain you know holy before god that y'all come together in sex and it's important <clears throat> i think people forget that Sex is much more than just a physical act. That sex is is a whole act. It's, it's the mind, the body, the spirit, the emotions, all are engaging. Right. And I think when you always have your mind focused on just the physical act and the physical release or the physical enjoyment, you'll forget about the spiritual responsibility that you have under God's observance and under God's uh, design of of what it requires to be connected like like you got to know your wife you want to like the, the sex becomes a little bit more intimate sex becomes a little bit more enjoyable when you actually love the person not lusting for the person right so you know what i'm saying when you actually care about who they are and you love them deeply that's a mindset right there's one more scripture that i want to kind of talk on real quick okay 
um, because we're going to be talking about this for a lot of weeks. And I just want to kind of give a spiritual foundation to these points is Hebrews 13, four. It says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. That's key. God cares so much about sex, but you won't care enough. Of, you won't be able to enjoy sex until you understand the honor that should be given to marriage. And I think with a lot of single people or people, period, marriage is not held in honor <clears throat> to a lot of people. You can tell by the divorce rate. Right. When you honor something, you you handle it differently. Right. When you honor something, you handle it with care. When you honor something, you are a servant to it. You want to help it. But if marriage is something that you go into with the exit plan and the exit strategy before you even said I do, you're not going to hold it to honor. And people forget that we're going to be judged by God on how we manage what he has graced us and gifted us to manage. He said he would judge all sexual immoral and adulterous. And you go back to what Jesus said. He says, man, if you even look at a woman with adultery in your heart, you've already committed. So he's saying, look, you got to have the right heart right. to honor marriage. And if you go into marriage with the wrong heart, the wrong heart, the wrong perspective, the wrong feeling about it. When you get into that thing, you're going to be drastically mistaken and you're going to find yourself. You know what? I don't know if I can really have sex with you all the days of my life. Your mind starts going into, I wonder what she feels like. I wonder what he feels like. Instead of saying, let me not help myself. Let me not enter into a marriage if I don't honor it. Right. He says, let me read it again. It says, man, let marriage be held in honor among all. When you look around us, not everyone holds marriage in honor. And he says, in the honoring of marriage, then let the marriage bed be undefiled. Now, what defiles the marriage bed, the married bed, is the defiled mentality, a defiled heart. We're not talking about sexual acts that defiles the married bed. It's when a person's heart does not hold marriage in honor that leads to the defilement of the married bed. And many people just, they're having sex, but they got another girl in their mind while they're having sex with their wife. Mm. They're having sex with their husband, but thinking about somebody else just to get them mentally involved in it. Right. But when you have the love of God in you and you can see your spouse differently and you understand that you have a spiritual uh, uh, um, uh, responsibility, then you will say, you know what? If my heart's not right, every day you have to check your heart for marriage. Mm -hmm. Every day I got to check my heart. Am I, am I holding this marriage up in honor? If not... I got to check my heart because I'm going to defile my married bed because I may, I don't, I'm, this hasn't happened, but I don't want my mind to be wondering because I don't have a heart that's anchored right. in holding marriage up in honor. Mm. That's good points, man. And you don't think about that stuff as, sometimes like as far as how it relates to, you know, it's your spirituality, and your personal walk with God and how that affects not only your marriage, but your sex life within marriage. Because, like you said, if you're not checking yourself every day, if you're not spending that time with God every day, if you're not renewing your mind every day, it's easy, man, to get caught up in everything that the world's putting out there on a platter. Like, my goodness, social media, <laughs> it's a trap, man. Like, it's easy it's to get trap. caught up in that <clears throat> thing and start looking at, you know, the Explore page on Instagram. And, you know, in that... It's all around us. It's all around us. And that stuff will affect your that's where the bible talks about your, the marriage you know bed being undefiled like that's right there that can mess your mind up and you thinking about other stuff why you supposed to be making love to your wife those images is playing through your mind and and that's the, and that's the fruit of what you engaged in throughout your days yep like, like, it's not easy. And I understand there's a lot of fellas out there, a lot of ladies. It's like, man, this world is so dense with perversion. Yeah. But listen, you got to make sure that you, it's going to take work. Anything worth having takes work to have and to maintain it. Exactly. And if you really want a marriage that, that is that is holy unto God, that God can use, like, like sex is the coming together of two people to, 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 to remind themselves of their bond with each other. Right. To remind our own selves, yo, this is my wife. If you have the, if you have a mistress mindset, but don't have a wife mindset, or you have a, a sugar daddy's mindset versus a husband's mindset, then when you look at that person, no matter how 
uh, uh, financially stable and how emotionally and spiritually invested he is in you. It doesn't matter how much of a wife she is to you and how much she cares about you more than you can ever be cared for. You still going to look at them as insufficient, no good, not able to satisfy because lust do not care about a wife. Lust don't care about how great of a man he is. Lust says, I want what I want. Lust is a cancer of the soul. It says, I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I want what I want. And she, I don't care how much that woman loves you, that man loves you. They are not satisfying you in that category. You're being satisfied, but your expectation and lust has exceeded its levels that now your body's like, well, I need two women in the room now. Right. That's the thing about now it. Need, like, lust is never satisfied. No never matter satisfied. what lust, you, it's <clears throat> always, you get accustomed to one level, it's going to take you to the next level. That's not enough. 